Great. So, uh, good morning again. Uh, I'm Frank Ling with the Anthropocene Institute. So, uh, this is less of a presentation, more of a uh, uh, a launch uh, announcement uh, or forthcoming launch of the Solid State uh, Energy Discovery website that we've been working on uh, for the past year. And so. I think a lot of the, the motivation around this is how do you get students and investors in, involved, the, the resources that you need most to get an industry going. And I, I believe it dovetails nicely with uh, some of the thoughts we had in the earlier panel, but also the, the announcement we had earlier in the week that ARPA-E is uh, going to be making an FOA in this topic. And so in, in order to, to um, get more people involved, we need to provide resources that would um, help them get at least a basic grasp of, of the issues and, and concepts and terminology. And so what this site does, and this is the front page here, is to um, give you a, a, a kind of an organized uh, map of, of the people who um, are most influential in this field, uh, the, the terminologies that um, we need to um, distinguish. So this comes from the uh, overview uh, page and what we've done essentially is to break down the the type of basic information down to foundational, scientific, and commercial. And in terms of foundation, you know we we've tried we've come across multiple terminologies in the past uh, past week. Namely, um, the solid state atomic and fusion energy is a concept that uh, we've started to uh, increasingly adopt as a way to describe this field and to to brand for the industry. And, and so things like this could get very um, confusing for people who just enter the field. We want to give a forum for at least these discussions to take place. And so these are our, uh, you know, our drafts of definitions that we've been putting together. And we welcome any feedback as how we could better communicate these topics. And so uh, obviously, a lot of people are still using low energy nuclear reactions, um, cold fusion. And all of these are completely valid terms. but. It, it can get confusing for people who are entering the field. Um, and so our mission and goals uh, I, I'd uh, touched upon earlier is we want to attract more students. Uh, we want to uh, bring more investment dollars. And you know, Michael had mentioned earlier that um, doing research uh, can be very time consuming. And someone who has actually uh, worked in a lab, uh, research is both time consuming and it can be very expensive. but depending on what access you have to the equipment, materials, and the resources you have around with you. And so to, um, to familiarize with you know, the, the kind of um, physics, material science, quantum um, engineering, uh, nuclear engineering, th those are the concepts we, we, um, we try to uh, overlap with in terms of discussions here. And so to, to get more into the uh, uh, weeds here, um, we, we have um, pages like the resources. And so this is only one part of it. Um, so for example, these are some of the books we've curated uh, that give a, a very broad overview of, of, of the uh, type of experiments, the, uh, the concepts that have been um, discussed by leading researchers in this field. And hopefully this will give uh, a backgrounder that uh, new, new scientists and engineers would find um, uh, you know, gives them that the foundational knowledge to to move forward. And so, besides resources, we've curated a series of peer-reviewed articles, um, um, uh, YouTube videos, as well as white papers that have been uh, widely discussed. And and so, the, the idea is that we take an impartial view in terms of of um, of the type of products that have been held there, and uh, you know, let people decide at the end of the day, does it make sense or not. Um, and other things we do is we uh, there's also a news section. So those are mostly um, um, copies of press releases that companies have made uh, in terms of how they've raised funds, how they've partnered with supply chains. So we want people to understand that as this industry grows, there is really a um, infrastructure that that is around there. But to also understand where the gaps are and where um, there, there could be companies that in the future would uh, be needed to, to enable alien art itself, so not just uh, these devices that supposedly produce excess heat or electricity, but 
uh, supply chains, including uh, the type of metals and the type of vessels and heat transfer mechanisms that we would need to enable these types of uh, applications. So uh, this site is still very much a rough draft, uh, and so we welcome inputs. And I've already had discussions with people at ICCF in terms of how we can produce some uh, new analysis and materials that would help um, investors and students enter the field. And so uh, just moving, can we go back? Ah, yes, one, one series is a, a, a series of um, uh, investor uh, related reports that I've been working on. So we only have two chapters, but we have a few more planned. And the idea is that these give you a, a, a really a brief summary that someone can uh, read in, say, you know, less than an hour to get an overview, but um, uh, you know, similar to how investment reports are made at, at some of the banks uh, when they talk about certain technology categories. Uh, and just going back to the mission, of course, uh, part of what we do, and more broadly at, at Anthropocene is education. How do we um, get all, the, all these topics out there uh, in a way that um, is easy to understand, easy to uh, distill, and uh, I think to complement some of this work is uh, we also have a media team that we've been developing to help popularize this among uh, different audiences, uh, especially uh, I think um, young scientists, engineers who are just finishing college or entering PhDs and want to figure out where they want to uh, do their work next. And so, yeah, uh, what I've given you here is a really brief summary, uh, and I invite the floor here for any questions. Is that website public right now? Yes, the site is working at solidstateenergy.org. Are you targeting any specific areas or schools for uh, reaching out to students? Yes, so I think one of the things with, with scientific community is that they're often very, um, um, they're very specific. And, and so a part of, I think, the campaign, and this is, you know, we, use, we see this more as vehicles. We use this as a way to reach out to uh, various scientific uh, societies, student groups. Um, that you know, it requires an insider, right? I, I think just to say we have a website and to put it up on um, on the web is not easy enough to, to bring an audience. But we really need to uh, use this as a tool to, to reach out to very specific audiences. And so, um, I, I think uh, you know your your conventional um, social media or ads probably will not get you there. But we have to really target specific audiences. And so this is, I, I think, one of the reasons. It's important to, to work with uh, a lot of students who are um, entering physics, uh, nuclear sciences, and, and quantum um, quantum science as well. Yes. Frank, do you see this as being a precursor to something that could provide something of like a, an industry association? or some best practices or guidance or shared data sources that can be of help to the industry as it's developing? Right, so uh, we already have Lenria, right, which uh, Steve Katinsky and Dave and Nagel have done an excellent job of, of assembling. Uh, but what we do is sort of be able to uh, facilitate a, a network of networks. So there's already other groups like um, uh, Leonard Forum, Leonard Canner, um, and, and you know various government projects, and I, I think um, given our position in being able to, to network with these different academic, policy-oriented, and financial groups, we, we see this also as a way to, to cross-pollinate between those types of uh, organizations. Mm -hmm.